Hello, this is number 49, Graph Transformations as part of my IGCSE exam questions series. Do give these questions a go. Please do like the video if you find it useful. And let's get into the maths. So if you haven't already, you might want to watch my video where I explain all of the graph transformations. Um, and here we're asked to sketch f of a half x. Now, whenever you have it inside the bracket, it does kind of the opposite of what you'd expect to do to the x coordinates. So rather than this stretching it by a scale factor of a half, it actually stretches it by a scale factor of two. So all the x coordinates double. So this one here at four would turn to eight. This one here at three would go to six. This one here at one would go to two. Um, the x on the, the zero would stay at zero. This one minus one will go to minus two, and this one at minus two will go to minus four. And then we connect it up in a smooth curve, just like it's shown here. And that graph transformation is complete. Okay, we've got, this has been transformed by um, adding on k inside the bracket. So that's changed it uh, to the um, moved it along the x-axis. So before, the minimum point here was at 1 minus 4. And now it is at minus 2 minus 4, which means it's shifted 3 to the left. And when we shift 3 to the left, we add 3 inside the brackets. So k is positive 3. Because adding on moves it to the left, which is a bit of the opposite of what you'd expect it to do. Uh, and inside the bracket, it does the opposite of what you expect. Okay, next question. This is outside the bracket. So this is a stretch by a scale factor of 2 in the y-axis. So let's take this point here, and that's going to be stretched up to 6. Uh, this point here is going to be stretched uh, to minus 2. This point here at minus 1 is going to be stretched to minus 2. And the points on at 0 will stay the same. So let's connect it up with a straight line to there and to there. Okay, for this question, we have been asked to do the transformation of f of minus x. So this is a reflection in the y-axis. So the x-coordinates will change into negatives. So we've got 1 minus uh, 1, 3 will turn to minus 1, 3. And 4 minus 1 will turn to minus 4, minus 1. And minus 2, minus 1 will turn to plus 2, minus 1. Connect them up, and we should see a reflection in the y-axis. Perfect. Okay, right, here's where it gets tricky when we are um, transforming a trig graph. So we're transforming a cos graph, so it's a good idea to have an idea of what the cos graph looks like. The cos graph starts off at 1 and then goes down to 0 at 90, minus 1 at 180, back up to 0 at 270, and then back up to 1. And what you'll notice is it has a gap or a range between 1 and minus 1, so it has a gap of 2. And if we look at the, um, the top point for um, this graph and the low point for that graph, it goes from minus, it goes from 2.5 to minus 2.5. So this has a gap of 5. So we've gone from a gap of 2 to a gap of 5. So we've timesed, we've stretched by a scale factor of 2.5. So therefore, A is 2.5. Okay, now we need to look at how this graph has shifted along. Well, the maximum point um, was here, and then it's moved to here. So it's moved 60 degrees to the right. So moving to the right, you would take away inside the bracket so that you can say that B is minus 60. OK, 
Okay, next part of the question, we have another curve has this equation and the coordinates of the minimum point are 4, 5. Write down the coordinates of the minimum point of the curve with this equation. So f of 2x will squash the x-coordinate by a factor of a half. So the x-coordinate becomes 2 rather than 4. And f of x minus 7 means we move the curve down by 7, so the y-coordinate will take 7 from it. So that will be minus 2. Okay, next question, and we are moving this minimum point, and f of minus 5 means that you move 5 to the right, so the x-coordinate adds on 5, which is going to give me 3 minus 1, and we've got a half outside the bracket, so it means we're stretching in the y by a scale factor of a half, so the y-coordinate gets halved, so it becomes minus 1 over 2. Okay, another tricky um, trig question. And we will need to, first off, draw what the sine graph looks like. And the sine graph starts at 0, 0, then it goes up to 1 at 90, back down to 0, minus 1 at 270, and then back up to 0 at 360. And again, that has a gap of 2. And the gap between the high point of 3 and the low point of minus 1 is a gap of 4. So therefore the gap has been doubled, so the graph has been stretched by a scale factor of 2. So A is 2. Um, we can next look at the line of symmetry that goes through the x-axis for our sine graph. And the line of symmetry goes through um, plus 1 for the transformed graph. So therefore, the transformed graph has been moved up by 1 from the original sine graph. So that means that the C value is plus 1. It's been moved up. And then here's the tricky part. Um, we have... Um, well, here's the maximum point of the sine graph, and then that has been moved over to here. So we have moved to the right 30, 60, 90. So we've moved 90 to the right. And moving to the right, we take away inside the bracket, so therefore B is 90. Okay, well here we have a sine graph, and we've been asked to draw this graph here which is a stretch in the y-axis by 2, which I'll do first. It'll go up 2 times as high, it'll come back down, and then it will go down 2 times as low, and then it will come back up, like that. And then what I need to do is I'll need to move that graph um, 2 spaces to, sorry, 30 degrees left. So if I pick up this line here, which I'm trying to do, I can't do that. I'm just going to draw it on again. So every um, coordinate will be 30 degrees to the left. So at 180, it will be over here. At 360, it will be over here. And at the maximum, it will be over here. And then I'll just draw that as best I can. So it's going to come up like this, down like this, and like that. And that has been shifted, the red line has been shifted 30 degrees to the left. I can get rid of the blue line, and we are good.